So good morning, good afternoon, good evening from wherever you are. So welcome to the Sakon Virtual Sakon. Uh, my presentation uh, will be on uh, Psycho Identity Server. So yeah, and a uh, little bit about me. Uh, myself, I'm Chaturanga Rantung. Uh, I'm working as a freelance Psycho consultant and I'm five times Psycho MVP and I'm from Sri Lanka. So you can see my blogs from Sitecore Footsteps blog. So yeah, and a little bit about the agenda. Uh, we'll, I mean, I I would not go into detail uh, into the theory part much. I, I have most of them are like exercise and practical implementation kind of way. We can discuss the theory part also after the exercise. Uh, so initially we'll discuss Sitecore identity and uh, we'll try to understand the uh, pre authentic uh, 9.1 authentication mechanism and then we'll uh, go into the authentication flow how the authentication flow works with uh, new sitecore uh, sitecore identity server so then i uh, will try to integrate ad azure ad b2c as a sub provider and try to log in using that credential into the sitecore and we'll discuss clay how the data is transferred from the uh, Azure to Sitecore step by step. And also we'll try to configure the site uh, front end side also to use the identity service. And uh, finally, we can look into the use of flows uh, you, where you can do like uh, add um, extra fields into the uh, AD and pass it to the uh, Sitecore. So, and also we will we'll discuss about how we can get the custom user profile created on Sitecore and then create newly the virtual users can be created using that, uh, etc. So, yeah. And a little bit about the approach I'm going to take. Uh, I, I'm more into the taking a do an example and then discuss about the theory part. So, initially we'll take a use case and then uh, try to implement it. And then you know, while doing this, we can uh, uh, discuss it those. Okay. So uh, yeah, initially a little bit about the, what is Sitecore identity service. So this is I introduced with Sitecore 9.1. Uh, this is a mechanism to uh, allow you to log into Sitecore. And it is based on the federated authentication functionality and also it uses identity server for implementation okay which this allows a single sign-on capability and also it uh, abstract the uh, authentication part away from the web uh, site core general website which allows uh, us to more control and more flexibility so yeah uh, so yeah so say that uh, the first use case or the requirement uh, we will try to see how to get it to the work with the pre 9.1 that is without identity service so i'm going there and try to stop the identity server and what you have to do is here in the app configs include examples you will find uh, two these two files so I have copied it uh, over here. I'm going to enable those configs. Okay. Okay. Let's see. I do see the site called login page. Mean it loads. Let's try to view the so it, it is basically removing the identity service from the configurations and making the uh, the federal authentication to force. So as you can see, the login page is served from the SC91, that is my psycho side. And uh, as we did, uh, the identity server is uh, stopped. So it is, the login is, you can see it is 
the delivered from our site. Okay. So yeah, my machine is a little bit slow. I'm not going to I mean I'll put my time on there. So for through that this explains the process. So yeah, and I'm going to roll back the implementation again. Okay. I'll just delete the files. My machine is not uh, responding well. Um, so while it is loading, uh, this is the way I mean uh, when you try to log in it is general uh, the it if the successor it will show you take you to the uh, shell site or the desktop or something you want to log in and if it is unsuccessful it will again come back to the login page so now I have rolled back it to the same implementation or the default uh, implementation 91 uh, implementation where the, we use the identity service and uh, in this exercise we are going to uh, try to configure azure ad p2c sub provider so we can use the backend side to log in using the uh, the user data in ad p2c okay so in this uh, part we have to first configure the azure ad p2c so yeah I have uh, the Azure tenant creator and So here you can see I have the Azure ADB to C, and here what we first have to create is we have to uh, register app in the app registration section so that uh, our website can talk to that. So here what we are going to do. So I have created two applications for example first one we will use this cycle one. So here I have so this is the one and if you go into the authentication tab we can see we have configured our uh, web return redirect URLs so you have to have the sign in IDSRE as the return URL and you can define the logout URL and in the this uh, the implicit ground flow in this section you have to enable id tokens and yeah that's basically it. so after getting it done then we have to go into psycho identity server side and configure that these uh, that to use these this application so yeah my site has been loaded so yeah you can see okay. 
and start the site identity series so what we have to do is Uh, yeah, this is uh, the one uh, that uh, I discussed. So we have to define the the redirect URL and set the ID token there. Yeah. And in uh, the Azure side, uh, the Sitecore Identity Server side, we have to go into the Identity Service uh, Sitecore and Azure AD plugin. This is a, a default plugin that has uh, Sitecore has provided. So can go here. Okay. Uh, yeah. This is a plugin that uh, Sitecore has by default provided. So I'm going to for now use that one in this file, uh, the configuration file. We'll see. The configurations that is necessary for the, uh, the site. For example, we can give the name here and we have to make this enable true. And here we have to give the tenant ID that we should be able to take from here, from the application. Application again, Azure AD application. Here you will see tenant ID. So that is one I have copied, and also you need the client ID there to put and paste it here. So I have already done that, and by default they are providing some uh, claim mappings. We can discuss that later. So once that is done, in the ID service you have to restart the service. Okay. Okay. Uh, as you can see, when I earlier requested the login page, it is now redirecting to the identity server uh, site. So this, even though this page looks same, uh, now the, this page is uh, different and it is served from the identity server site. Okay, let's try it again. And let's see what we have to do now. Then, yeah, then we should. And meanwhile, it is loading. I will try to show you one of the users I have. So I, I'm going to use that uh, user to log into the system. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah so you can see i have this user i'm going to use this user to log into the our site course site so instead of uh, using the default uh, the site call login, i am going to uh, as you can see once we did this uh, enabled and add this uh, client and tenant id you will see this azure id uh, button 
here once we click it uh, the site uh, ident server will redirect us to the azure login page yeah, yeah. Uh, so what uh, you uh, witnesses uh, i have already logged in earlier so you can see uh, my credentials are saved so what you see is you you should be able to get a uh, azure login page and you enter the credentials and you it will redirect you back to the psycho identity server okay but uh, you will see we are not uh, logged into the system that and you will see a error message here that is because even though you have been authenticated from the azure and returned to the psycho we haven't grant any roles or permission to that this newly logged in user in psycho site okay to fix that we have to map this uh, user role to some some role or the some permissions and set of permissions that are defined in psycho so in this case i'm going to define map this user's role any user login to the role uh, as psycho developer and just save it as you do we have to restart let's try again so that is the part there we you see the permission here what i have mentioned here so as you can see this is the same error or that because we have not assign the correct role or set of permissions from our side even though the login is successful Okay, uh, so yeah, let's try it again. Try to go into the sure. So you can see I have login. So the credentials are there. That's why you didn't see the login screen. But again, now I have been redirected and logged into the uh, system uh, or the backend psycho side because I have given the developer role. As you can see, you only see the limited sets. That's because the role is uh, developer. Okay. So that's how you map the uh, necessary permissions from. Uh, Site cos site, so and then yeah, so this is it. So as what happened is, so once you uh, authorize or the uh, come to the page, if the and the, you log in, if you are not uh, authorized or not login, you will redirect to the uh, SIO site co identity server, 
and then uh, if you once you uh, go to the uh, Azure and enter the credentials you are uh, if the credentials are true you are redirected to the Cycle client and it's the same way if you have already logged in, in this scenario that I have I had here because I didn't have to enter the credentials because I was already logging. But uh, let's you know is doing I can show it also. Okay. So that's the flow, user flow of this uh, uh, integrating Azure ADP to C with the Psycho identity. So so you can see here I just try to log in here and I was taken to the and you see the this is the actual the actual login page see my password is correct yes so it then Azure validates my login and redirect me to the site site and you can see I am logging into Psycho now so if you want to see this user let's uh, because uh, this I have enabled the persistent user yeah so we should be able to see the user in user manager Think it is this user and you can see full name and the email is mapped so this is the full name you see and this is the email so that's the user that they use to log in okay so next requirement or the next task what we're going to do is we are going to now in this section we what we did was we integrate the uh, backend side or the site called uh, backend shell side so now we are we will try to integrate a front end side or for example you can use this same scenario for the um, xsa site or something like that, uh, to the ad b2c sub provider okay so first we have to have the site definition so let's see yes i have that configuration already in place so i have a c full step site and host name is defined i have already configured those name into the site and everything. and then uh, what do you have i have used this required login to true so that uh, once we visit the this uh, cfostreps.local site it will uh, check the uh, uh, authentication if it is not authenticated it will redirect you to the login page which is defined here so as you can see login page is set to identity server site query in server so yes let's try that on because i already have the site definition let's try this yeah uh, so you will see this error the sorry uh, there was an unauthorized client this this error is because thrown from the site our site quite into that is because you will have to uh, allow this host name or uh, to be uh, recognized from the uh, identity server so you have to go into the identity server configs production and there you will have to add this allowed cross origin as your host name okay Certain you start let's try again
So, so you can see it is redirecting to the uh, steps site query in the server that login URL that we have defined. Okay. From here, we can do the same thing. We can go to the Azure AD. And you will see because the my login is there, you will see uh, the login is getting success. Okay, uh, I will show it again, otherwise it's a bit confusing. Okay, hopefully, yes, I get the login screen. And when I log in for the Azure, you can see the uh, infinite loop. Uh, the reason for this is uh, it was in the 9.1, uh, you could say it was a bug, uh, not exactly a bug, but this since this is a custom definition, you see for steps.local is custom uh, our sky definition, we have to allow uh, or say to say the identity service that uh, this host name should be uh, allowed or the process uh, in from the identity server okay so to do that let's see yes we will have to go into the our Yes. Yeah. So to do that, here you can see the we have to enable our SE four step site to so that the identity the identity server should be recognized and process that site also. Okay. Yeah, I have the site defined here. And start. And also the the this setting you will see persistent user the persistent user is this is to keep the virtual users created on Sitecore uh, or you can uh, otherwise it will not uh, keep them created on a site when you it is not visible on the user manager so this is useful if you needed if you are planning to do the personalization on the uh, historic data of the user. So this you have to keep the user persistent. See, I'm going to the Azure now. Hopefully my credential is already there. Yeah, my creation is already there. And okay, uh, I was I logged into the back end side, not to the front end side. So yeah, you can see my credentials are already there, and I'm getting served the home page. If I'm not authenticated, I will not serve that page because in the site definition I have said require login to true. Okay, so that is how you have to do. And this uh, the final. Uh, fix I did was can be considered a bug or because uh, I, or I, it is not mentioned anywhere but it is uh, uh, pointed by the uh, mark in the community member uh, he helped me also 
to find it because he has a support ticket and got the uh, it from support so that is one thing to keep in mind and then uh, we move into the next re requirement that is uh, a redirect the uh, front end side directly to the Azure because at the moment what we do is we are showing the cycle login page also which is not that uh, user friendly here yeah. We, we don't have to because uh, if we are planning to use the uh, issuer, so we should be able to uh, redirect or uh, direct the user directly to the issuer uh, without showing the our site login. Okay? So to do that, you have to open the um, site definition and here you have to add the provider name. The provider name is the identity provider as vd plus this is the provider authentication scheme you have to add that to the end of your login url and let's see if it works or not and i'm trying to visit the front end site let's see footsteps dot local Hopefully, it will redirect directly to Azure. Yes, so you see, I didn't. Uh, it, you, yeah, you type it and it, re, it doesn't show you the site called login page, it directly uh, redirects me to Azure login page. And I give the credentials okay. and it should take me to the front end site so that is uh, a way to avoid the login page okay and uh, then uh, i will show the we will discuss a little bit more on psycho virtual users that i showed you earlier so there are some uh, points just that you should remember uh, about psycho virtual users that create that gets created when you have this uh, persistent users hitting set to true so let's take a user yes user manager yeah, uh, so this is a for example. And then you can see in the member section, you don't see any roles, even though we have assigned the developer role, you don't see that is uh, uh, in uh, or the that is a issue or the uh, that is the way Psycho works for the virtual users, they don't show the role in your user manager, and hence you cannot see the access viewer or the access for that user also in the content tree. And also you cannot change the password for that user. Okay. So that is some things to keep in mind on virtual users. So as you can see, member and access is not visible. Okay. Uh, then uh, we, we will discuss, now, now we have used all the time the default site call domain okay let's say you have a, you need to use a different domain and you have to assign a different role you will have to have a, like a custom fields for the profile here additional properties like that so to do that that is also possible with the uh, you can uh, integrate it without much uh, uh, much trouble into uh, uh, site call uh, with the psycho identity service 
okay so first you will have to create a, a template as we i mean it is the just basic stuff no, no, nothing new you go into the core database if you have or otherwise it is should be master okay let's see here template system okay it is security i have created this template for the and it contains member number so this is a new custom field i need to add into the my new users so this is the default one that has so i have created a new template for the new user and then i have let's see yes, yes i should have it in the setting system setting security i have created a user profile item using that template okay, in the security section okay profiles here yeah. you will see this is the default one this is the new uh, one that i created using the newly created template okay so remember i will copy this value this is since i i will have to use it later the id of the item so we'll go back master and that is creating we now have created the user uh, template and also user profile item okay on core database then we'll have to create a domain say so, say so that you have to have a different size should have different domains so here i have created se for steps domain and also i created a se for steps identity role in that domain okay you want to see i have already done it i can show here i have read the sifu steps domain yeah okay that since that is done now remaining parties we have to say uh, to the identity service when the new user is created or new account is created use this uh, domain okay to store so to do that you have to go into the psycho identity yes let me see okay so it is in the psycho plugin identity server here you should see i insert xml when you open it you will see default account prefix setting there you will have to update se footsteps okay or the new domain so one thing you might uh, now think that is this is the one time entry yes because uh, with the this current uh, implementation of identity service you cannot uh, use it for different uh, uh, domain uh, so uh, if you want to use it you have to have a, like set up uh, two identity servers and then use it differently different sites so that is uh, a small issue that you might face with the current implementation okay so yep uh, let's see i have it here let's see is that all the things i need let's check yeah. okay so for now i will uh, we will not go into the user creation part i will show it later once we did the since we created this uh, member number field we will discuss first how to populate it okay so say that now uh, for example i created for example if the this profile you will see member number field also because it is a new they create a profile and custom with the custom field so that we need to populate it also okay and to do that say that we we say that you have a new field on azure site okay so say 
uh, set user attributes here in the Azure AD B2C. You can see you can add new attributes. So here I have added member number, a string data type, and name is member number. Okay, so you can add uh, as many as you want. Then we have to pass it. When you create a profile, this value should be also visible in that user. Now, okay, for example, this user which I have already created, you should see. Uh, it seems it doesn't show the custom field, but uh, it, it is there. I will show in show it in the when I uh, get the tokens out for that user. So in the GUI you cannot see. And then now we have that field created then we we cannot we should be able to pass it with the claims or the with the once the user authenticated we should be able to pass that uh, attribute with the authentication so to do that you have to uh, do a user flow this is a custom flow because uh, by the uh, default flows or the default implementations that we used earlier we are not allowed to make new fields so for that we have we have to create new user flow. I have created a new user flow uh, flow for sign in purposes. I uh, name it B two C one sign in. And here in the user attribute section, you can map which claims or the which fields should be written, okay, or the which should be used for this. And I have said the member number also. And in the application claims you can define which should be returned. And I have checked member number field there. So once the login success, it will return that field also. So now we have finalized the things in the AD side. Uh, let's, yeah, let's move into the side core side, okay? So in the side core side, we will have to do some custom coding because we are using a custom uh, user flow. We have to define that uh, tail side code to access that uh, user flow. For that, we have to write our own plugin. Okay. Now, when we come to the plugin in the identity server, there are two types of plugin. One is runtime plugins that side code has provided by default. For example, uh, these plugins are Runtime plugins that comes with side by default with Hydeco. For example, this Azure one we use earlier. Uh, and there's, if you want to have a custom plugin, it will come as a runtime plugin. Okay, compare So those plugins come with runtime and under production or the environment. Okay, you can see the arm is copied to the to the and then inside that your plugin folder should go. And here you have to define the manifest file uh, where it says what is your plugin and you are, this is a name of the LL, this is the name of the DLL, and this is a version like that. Uh, the, the, this is the one that uh, bind the things into sidecoins. Eh? And this is the configuration file okay? for the, this, our new custom compile type plugin. Okay, let's see. Yeah, so this is a file. Now here you will see I have make it uh, Azure AD B2C. The earlier plugin was just uh, Azure AD by default plugin. The, since this is uh, AD B2C, I, I have named it AD B2C. And I have enabled it also. And you can see in the metadata section, I have defined this uh, path and you, as the policy, I have given the policy that we created in Azure or the Policy means the user flow. This is B2C1 underscore signing. 
obtains the that is the metadata address okay and as we did for the early implementation you have to have the tenant name and the client id mapped okay one thing to note on that one is okay i will show i have another app so this is the azure app and in the authentication section i have same return urs define and id token here you will have to enable the client uh, this one to yes so the the psycho can uh, send the request to this uh, azure application okay so that is done and i have some uh, mappings here play mappings that is uh, to say and here the you see the member extension the member number that we create this is the source claim that comes from azure and uh, here what we say is get the member number field and map it to the member in and no field in psycho psycho it is the field profile profile field is member in of number field so you might think how uh, how i should uh, i get this extension member number field name okay so there is a few ways to debug this okay and find the so okay uh, the presentation yeah so we have working on this as we did uh, we create the custom uh, profile uh, user uh, uh, property and map it into the bcc login sign in option and now we'll try to understand how to see this what what data has been returned so first you will have to understand what data will be returned from azure to psycho identity service okay to do that you have to go into your application azure id to be to see application that you created okay and authentication yeah, was it okay here you can see the endpoints that uh, i have used in the xml the endpoint i got you can take it from here from the endpoint section for the application okay I'm trying to go one step back. Okay, yeah. Uh, you have to go back into the user flow. Yeah, if you go into the, you will see run user flow. And when you click it, you will be able to select the application that is IQ4. And this uh, JWTM, you will be able to return any return type also, but this JWTM is allows you to it will output the uh, um, it as a text so for example when i click uh, run the use flow it is asking me credentials or oh, uh, you can register i i have already created this user once i logged in so this is the authentication success and this jwdms site will show which data is getting return and this number is the field so is the value of the that for this user so that is how you find out what values are returned from uh, then uh, let's uh, move to looking to queries are returned to identity serve. For that, you have to go into the logs. Uh, hey, Chaturanga, we're going to have to start wrapping it up soon, mate. Oh, okay, I will uh, finish up in five minutes. Uh, so uh, yeah, there you can uh, find it from the logs, okay? 
So once that is written here, we define map this extension underscore mem number which is mem number claim which is written from Azure into member number field in our Tago user profile. So that is how you that okay. So I have it. We'll try to see how it gets populated and everything. And here you can see in the logs you can see the extension in the values are returned for the site for identity server side. And then in the profiles, this is how we map it. And one thing is now we have to tell to Psycho, this is a Psycho thing. Uh, say that the domain is we define the SC footsteps domain. In the, uh, you have to add another profi property called default profile item and add the newly created uh, template or the profile item which contains a member number uh, as the property. Otherwise, this will not uh, use the default template, not use the newly created template for the user that uh, we created in the core database. So that is one thing to remember. Uh, yep. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Let's see. Now, oh, okay, uh, yeah, I will have to remove that direct redirect. Otherwise, it is getting redirected to the on the site definition. Okay, email it is loading. You see, claims. Uh, yeah, I will show this one. A little bit extra things to, I mean, you have to define if you get uh, errors, you have to check the SC variable identity server authority set to the UI identity server path. And also there are some, uh, some discussions on stack exchange that is that if you set the is administrator checkbox for the user, uh, it will not uh, unchecked uh, if you, the admin, uh, so you have to manually do it. So as you can see, now you see another extra one the new one that custom uh, plugin we define Azure ADP to C. We go into that one. Okay, login. And we return to our site and then we can go into our backend site. Here's a manager. These are some resources that I refer, and also, oh, yep, this got loaded. And you can see this virtual user is the new. Uh, I think that is the newly created one. Uh, I'm not sure if it got success. Yeah, something I miss something. Uh, the number I did. Okay, we're so, gonna wrap. Uh, we're gonna wrap have, yeah. To wrap up. Yeah. And, and so I, what you should do is uh, you should uh, see a new user as. So with this one, and you should uh, see a profile and member number field populated. So this is a new profile uh, fields that you have. Yep. Any questions? Um, yes, <laughs> a whole whole heap of questions. Um, so we'll, we'll start at the bottom. Um, Amit wants to know what's the Sorry. use of the add key equals security define value with your site core in the web config. Uh, okay. Um, Can you repeat again? Yeah, Amit wants to know what is the use of add key equals security colon define value equals site call in the web config? Um, 
not sure where I is referring to. Okay, he, yeah, he must get back to you on that one, but, mate. Uh, um, there, there, yeah. there is one question. Um, there's people wanting your slides and want to get a, uh, send a link to the blog um, about this. Is a lot of interest in this. Um, uh, Balaji wants to know how to set assign different cycle roles for different Azure users. Yes, that is the one I explained that uh, you can, uh, uh, yeah, that is done from the claim mapping here. For example, if you are mapping the claim, uh, here I'm just mapping the one field to another field. Uh, I can show you how to. Um, you probably don't need to go into it, but I'd say we definitely yeah. need, a, need a link to your um, your blog on this because uh, it's it's got a lot of interest, yeah? Okay, okay, uh, yeah. yeah. So you can yep. map it uh, from the claims, basically. Like okay. This. Uh, I'm, I'm, what's... I'm making Pratik as a presenter in the meantime, when you guys are answering questions. Yeah. Um, Rashid wants you to repeat the configuration steps, but I don't think we should go through that. Um, with that sounds like a blog topic for me. Um, Thai thanks you for your presentation and your question is mapping claims to the cycle roles config base this means that for example a new group in active directory needs a deployment to map correctly is there any way around this yes uh, it is like uh, here you can like uh, you can define groups in the active directory you can uh, decide whether depending on the property value on the active directory and for example it should be the, the source value and then the this field value is psycho. So you can uh, like uh, define the role and then value, like the whatever role you need. And this should be the value that uh, group or any field in Azure Active Directory. Okay, cool. Uh, Kumar wonders, I've got a use case where without a login page, uh, say a user hits a domain, a site called CD site homepage, if they're not authenticated, they get redirected to uh, Azure AD login page and once authenticated, get redirected back to the uh, homepage of the site. Yes, yes, that is, that's the one, one I showed you. You can skip the uh, uh, site call login page and then uh, directly log into the redirect your without showing the cycle login page you can you should be uh, able to see for example here you can append the uh, azure id or the sub provider name so it will directly send you there yeah yep okay um little little little, little cool uh, Ramesh, is there a way? Is there a way to get the slides or the blog link for this? Well, they will be soon, Ramesh. We'll we'll make sure you get that out there, chat, because it was a really good presentation. Um, I would want to know why would you use identity identity service for a website you're hosting on Sitecore? Saying identity service was created as the internal authentication system of Sitecore itself, and there was a need for this as part of you know as we move towards microservices and the need to be centralized authentication uh, service. For front-end users-facing authentication, it wouldn't be better or more appropriate to use something like Azure AD B2C, B2C and leverage the uh, cycle federated authentication. Yes, at that point, it is much uh, the federated authentication does provide much uh, uh, much functionality or the flexibility, and Cycle itself has. Uh, we should uh, oh, mention it. We should uh, we can use the federated authentication. Can use the federated authentication for the front end uh, authentication on their website documentation. But uh, say that if your requirement is very minimal and you don't have much customization, uh, using this identity server, you don't have to have any code. You just uh, with a few configuration changes, you can get uh, the login and authentication up and running. So. Uh, that's why I just did it for the front end side. Also, it provides much flexibility to have it uh, that way, a little bit flexibility because our authentication and everything uh, we can manage it in the identity server side. So, we don't have to uh, get to worry about any, any configs or any code on the website side. So, yeah, yeah good question. 
Oh, good question. All right. So, and there's uh, the other questions really around when we get our hands on this blog of yours with all the links in it. So, um, Chad, if you want to, we are recording this everyone. So, uh, you know, fingers crossed, if everything goes well to recording, we'll have these sessions up. Um, but chattering, I might, might be able to make the slides available on Twitter. Okay. Yeah. Hey, thank, thank you so much, chattering. That was uh, great. Thank you. Okay, well, uh, as you can see, we've got a donation um, uh, URL down the bottom of the page. We're supporting the World Health Organization and the UN um, by donating to help the, the, the front-end people who are out there working in this, um, this tough time. So please do go and donate. We've got about 1,600 euro in there at the moment, uh, about 3,000 New Zealand dollars. Okay, so next up, uh, we've got Prateek is ready to go. Yeah. the First commerce session for the day. <laughs> <laughs> so where's Pratik? Is he, there we go. Yeah. Um, uh, can you hear us, Pratik? You're all on and sorted. Muted? Yep, I can hear you guys. Yeah. Okay, great. Yeah. All right. So we're ready to go whenever you are. Okay. So we are not uh, broadcasting right now, right? Uh, we are. It's oh, ongoing. Yeah. Okay. Testing. Okay. Okay. Sorry. Okay. Uh, then I can. No, I'm good. Yeah. You can share your webcam as well. Thanks. All right. 